But we begin with another big story today in Europe, the arrest of the Canadian man at the center of the so-called body parts case. Luca Magnato was nabbed in Germany today after a worldwide police search that reached into 190 countries. How's everybody doing today? Here I am in Montreal. Uh, this is a difficult video to make. I'm just gonna talk and not really edit out what I'm, what I'm gonna say, because I'm gonna kind of get to where I'm going first, film it, and then leave. See, in Canada, when there's infamous crimes, it's a, it's very personal in Canada for people. I, I can't explain it. Like, there's been a, a few, like, um, Paul Bernardo, Russell Williams, and now Luca Magnata as well. When these crimes happen in Canada, we want to forget about it. People want to um, sweep it under the carpet. And, I mean, learn from it, of course, but it's, it's, it's very touchy subjects. It's very, very difficult to, like, people talk about it, of course, but... I don't know, it's just, a, it's just, it's, it's, I just know it's a difference between true crime in Canada and the rest of the world. I mean, it's just a very difficult topic for, for me as a Canadian, because it happened here, and just for the subject matter itself. I'm gonna, okay, well, there's a Netflix documentary called Don't Fuck With Cats. I haven't seen it, and it's basically about some internet sleuths who, because there's animal cruelty in it, that's why I didn't watch it. I mean, I, I love horror movies. I watch a lot of true crime stuff. and listen to true crime podcasts. But for me, it's with it, when it's animal cruelty, I can't. I just can't. So I, I, within 30 seconds of that Netflix series, I turned it off. But I know the full story of Luca Magnotta. I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. Basically, he was psychotic. He's a young man, and in this apartment building right here, he created a video called One Lunatic, One Ice Pick, where he murdered a young man named June Lin in 2012. And he uploaded the video to the internet. And this set off a chain reaction of, he just, this is, if you can't stand the gory details, I would stop watching now because it's brutal he sent parts of this young man's body across Canada left it in different parts of Montreal finally he was caught I mean, he went to Paris then he was caught in Berlin in a cyber cafe where he was reading articles about himself this case was world famous he claimed that he was in a relationship with Carla Homoka Paul Bernardo's ex-wife that was not true. The guy was is a complete narcissist, psychopath, sociopath. And the crime that he committed was removed uh, apartment 208 of this apartment building right here. Now it's very difficult for me to get to it because there's a highway right facing. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna film this. But we're gonna film it. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you it. And then we're gonna go uh, visit the grave of Jun Lin, which I think is more the focus point of my video to pay tribute to the victim of this horrible, horrible crime. There's a lot of surveillance video. This is right on a highway, I'm sorry. There's a lot of surveillance video of Luca Magnata going in and out of that apartment building right there. And that's where it occurred, in apartment 208. Now, I'm gonna take you a little closer. As as I was saying, just even going past an apartment building like this of such notoriety in Canada, I've been all over the States and filmed true crime and done other things, 
other videos where like people's houses that were used in movies and stuff. And you always got to be careful about, you know, who's going to say something or who's going to come out. People ask that all the time. Ever been yelled at or ever been whatever, you know, a couple of times, Amityville. And this is the location where I'm just like, uh, as soon as I'm outside of it, pointing the camera, people are going to know what I'm, why I'm filming it. But it's part of the story that I'm telling about Luca Magnata, one of the worst killers in Canadian history. And it occurred right here. This building right here. Right there, that lobby, that's very famous because a lot of surveillance footage was caught of Luca Magnata going in and out with Jun Lin. And that's ultimately how they caught him. With surveillance footage, Jesus Christ, scare me. Surveillance footage, he left papers with his name and stuff near the body that was found, the torso when it was found. So they kind of, they found his address and they got the surveillance video. There was a big sign in the lobby there saying surveillance, video, video surveillance underway or whatever. And uh, so they caught, so they watched that surveillance footage and the post office surveillance video footage, figure out who he was. He used his own name though and passport to get to France. I don't know how that happened because they already knew who they were looking for at that point, I believe. And then his cell phone pinged in France. By the time they got there, he was already gone. Like I said, he was caught in Berlin. I'm probably leaving out a lot. I mean, the things he did to animals first, he was just, I mean, it says psycho right there, as you can see. Kind of sums it up about Luca Magnata and what he did.
said that the Jun Lin was his only victim, but it could possibly be another or more. After Luca Magnata was apprehended, obviously there was a huge outcry of anger in Canada and in the Chinese community as well. Um, and he was ultimately sentenced to a life sentence, which is 25 years in Canada. So he's currently serving that out. But he'll never get out. He'll be declared a dangerous offender if he hasn't already. And a dangerous offender was essentially something that was placed into a uh, effect around the Paul Bernardo trial. A very, very infamous killer in from Toronto. So that he could never get out. It means that once you serve your 25 years, the parole board can take a look at your case and say, no, you're too dangerous to ever be let out. Because the life sentence in Canada is only 25 years. Doesn't mean life. But now with the dangerous offender status, these criminals can't get out. And Luca Magnotta did a lot of, like he was with, in terms of like, impersonating people to steal credit cards and, the, and ripping off, I think it was like Sears and the brick. Filed for bankruptcy. He had over 70 Facebook pages. He was trying to be somebody else all the time. He was always running from who he really was, I think, or who he, or chasing an image of who he wanted to be. He had multiple plastic surgery. The video, I've never seen it. I'm not going to. Uh, it must be just horrific. And for the family of Jun Lin, I can't imagine uh, their pain. Uh, having a child die, but having a child die in that in that way. So now we're gonna go visit the grave of Jun Lin. And I for, was under the impression he was buried in uh, Wuhan, China, where he's from. But actually he's buried here in Montreal, the same cemetery where Leonard Cohen is, um, Rene Angelil, Celine Dion's husband, Dino Bravo. I had no clue. So I'm headed back there now. Let's go. So here I am in uh, cemetery Notre Dame de Neige yet again. Um, this is difficult. I've noticed that this cemetery seems to be divided into um, sections like this is an Italian section, a Jewish section. I'm now in the Asian section. And there's lots of family members out all around me. And they're burning things at the grave and sitting around the grave sweet to see like lighting little fires and stuff and sitting with their family members I think that's really nice and really sweet to see I'm here to find Jun Lin and I only know the number and the yeah <laughs> I know it's in this section but it's huge so as soon as I find Mr. Lin I will get right back to you okay and actually, that didn't take so long. I was able to find him right here.
If you're looking for Jun Lin and you want to pay your respects, go to Section K. They're all alphabetical. You find Section K and he's near the back of Section K, right in the middle. So my best advice is just to come into the cemetery and look for Section K and right at the back. This is about a six minute drive from the apartment building where it happened. And like I said, I thought it was odd that he was buried in Montreal and not in China where he's from. But his parents made the decision to bury him here. I was just reading after they realized that Canada was where he wanted to be and this was his favorite place. So they wanted to bury him in his favorite place here in Montreal. They said he can now rest in peace in his favorite city. His mother issued a statement saying that when he left China, he wanted to say goodbye with smiles. And after the funeral, she said, I think it's time to wipe away our tears and say goodbye with our smiles. So, leaving Julin's gravesite, and I know I may not have said the entire story about Luca Magnata. Um, you know, small time porn actor, con man, <sighs> sociopath. You can read a lot more about him online and watch documentaries. For me, this is more about paying respects to his victim, and I want to also show you, of course, like where it happened part of the story but Jun Lin's life was bigger than that was bigger than what happened to him he had a family who loved him friends who loved him and he had goals and dreams and because of one man he can never meet or accomplish those now it's very very it's just heartbreaking I hope Luca Magnata never gets out of prison I don't think he will rest in peace Jun Lin all right, and peace out to you. I love you all. Peace out.